obviously you're the current champions of, of Brazil. That was the title you got in 2022, obviously last year. Your celebrations, um, <laughs> I hear, were quite something. Can you tell us about what you did after becoming champion? <laughs> and obviously the Brazilian player of the year as well. You had an awesome year. Yeah. One of my dreams also. Um, after the we been champion, I've always get a I don't know how do you say here, but like Oreo like cookies, you oh, know? Yeah. Yeah. And Oreo uh, cookies. In a bottle of condensed milk. And I like put Oreo in the mouth and drink the condensed milk and <laughs> this is my celebration. <laughs> and did I hear something about you? Running around the pitch and doing something crazy as well. I don't know. Did the celebrations extend further than Oreos and condensed milk? Uh, uh, Palmeiras, they they make me a, a a very good surprise, unforgettable surprise for me. They build a skate, almost a small skate park on the field for me, and it was like there's some some things that I never dream about it, but when it happens. It's like a dream coming through, you know? Yeah. So uh, it was crazy. I mean, you were, well, you still are such a superstar over there in Palomeros, obviously. You know, you've got things like the Rubik's Cube. They made a Rubik's Cube yeah. for you <laughs> to sell at the club shop. Um, obviously, you're two times Libertadores champion, two times champion of the league for them. The Brazilian player of the year, you know, I know the dream was always the Premier League, but was there not something that wanted to keep you there because of the accolades you've achieved and, and the status you held at that club. Yeah, of course, because it was very hard to achieve, 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 achieve everything I did. But, uh, I mean, I've always wanted to, to make a new challenge in all of these. Uh, I don't like to stay in the same place doing the same things. So when this opportunity came, uh, and I was like, I have to go for it. Tell us about the Copa Libertadores. I mean, that's quite the achievement. Yeah. I mean, and some memories that you that you have there. I was watching your absolute screamer from 30 <laughs> yards in 2019. From like a set piece, wasn't it? Someone kind yeah. of just kicked you the ball and you absolutely <laughs> hit it in the back of the net. <laughs> like I'm picturing that now from seeing it on YouTube. Just describe those moments that you had it. it in that tournament yeah it was a very uh, special moment because we were playing away and it was against Grêmio. they had a great team and the player who was near to me uh, he was like okay cross and i was no bro touch me and i'll shoot it no it's too far and uh bro pass me the ball and he was like okay then <laughs> i shoot it and don't remember nothing. Well, the celebrations, again, if you want to go have a look, quarterfinals 2019, Gremio, to get the semis, I believe. Yeah. The goal was special. The celebrations was something else. You do love your celebrations, don't you? Yeah, I don't, I think I did something like this. <laughs> it was so exciting that uh, sometimes I don't know what to do. And is it, was it twice a pinch yourself moment that you became the Copa Libertadores champion? Did you ever expect to achieve Two of those titles. I've always wanted, but um, I didn't expect that after our first one, we're going to do the our second one straight the same year because of the COVID and all of this. Uh, it was a, <laughs> a very special moment because uh, in Brazil, it's quite a bit different. The pressure on football and all of this, the respect. Uh, so when we... Active. The second Libertadores was crazy, and then we realize we are doing like great things for the club. I mean, what what is it like when you win over there? Obviously, when we went up over here, you know, City Hall is taken over, Nottingham City Centre, everyone comes out. What's the pictures like in where you are in, in Palmeiras? Describe the scenes there. <laughs> Ah, it's almost the same. We're going on a on a bus and the fans like a lot of fans in the street. You have like one mile away 
you took like two hours and a half, something like this, just celebrating and eating Oreo with condensed milk <laughs> and the guys drinking. It's very fun. I mean, over in Brazil as well, can you walk down the street? Do people recognize you a lot? Yeah, they recognize me a lot. But uh, in the last few years, I changed my mind a little bit with all of the... Because of the skate skateboarding, uh, I start to just living a normal life in the, in the good moments, in the bad moments. Uh, but yeah, sometimes I'm skating and someone's, hey, can I take a picture? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay. But uh, it's normal. It's a good thing. Uh, it's, it means like I'm doing my job very well. And in terms of, of being here, How different has it been to how you train and competitions in Brazil? Like, is the setup quite similar or is it quite different? Uh, here, it's quite a bit different. In More terms of? In terms of fight. And in Brazil, uh, sometimes you get a yellow card. And here, the ref not even call a foul. So <laughs> it's hard to get used to it. But it's very good because you play more, you know. Uh, sometimes in South America, mostly in Brazil, Uh, the game is so, uh, not boring, but the ref calls a foul of everything. Of course, we, as a player, we have a, respons a responsibility in, uh, in all of this. I think it's our culture. Uh, maybe <laughs> we won't change the nothing there, but yeah, here it's quite a bit hard.